Hi everybody, this is Adam Baragzai over at AHS Realty Pros, and today we're gonna do a virtual home buyer workshop. We got Cindy Lowry here, and she's on the call with us. Hello everyone, Cynthia Lowry here. I work with Commerce Home Mortgage here in California, Pleasant Hill. I'm right here, I'm Adam, and this is uh, our broker here, Kenny. We're at AHS Realty Pros in Concord, so we service clients anywhere from down to Modesto all the way up to Sacramento. So definitely a wide range of knowledge on different neighborhoods. And a little bit about us. I'm actually the brokerage manager here at AHS Realty Pros. And we have about 20 agents here. And so we have a lot of people from different backgrounds, uh, Spanish speakers, people that speak Tagalo. I think we speak a total of almost 11 languages, which is pretty awesome. Cindy, can you let us know a little bit more about your background in lending? Yes, I've been lending in the business for over 14 years now. And I work with a wonderful company in Pleasant Hill that we have all in-house uh, operations that begins with our, our um, disclosure desk, processing, underwriting, doc drawing, and funding. So we're all located central in um, our office, which makes things expedite much quicker than having to go to different uh, areas of even states. There are certain lenders that operate uh, certain sections of their operations team out of state that takes things a little bit longer to um, get processed and we're able to do processing alone a lot quicker. So just to kind of keep it brief on here, uh, you guys keep everything in house pretty much. Is that what it is? Yes, it's like a one stop shop. Nice. So I actually had the pleasure of meeting Cindy here uh, about two years ago. And when I met her, she really changed uh, my real estate career. Uh, and, uh, you know, she has a great knowledge about uh, different programs from investors to first time buyers and down payment assistance. So, really great resource to have for my clients. And I'm going to share with you guys a little bit more about the home buying experience, what to expect, what fees you should incur. And we're going to go a little bit more in depth uh, about the whole process. And uh, let's go ahead and get this started. So Cindy, do you want to go ahead and cover this little section here? What do you want to learn about the home buying process, right? Cindy and I are going to cover this in depth with you guys today. So in today's discussion, we're going to go ahead and outline fear versus fact about buying a home the realities of today's market, six simple steps to home ownership, financing, next steps to go ahead and close up escrow. Here's uh, some fears and facts about uh, buying a home. I'm gonna cover the fear and uh, Cindy's gonna go ahead and cover the fact. I can't afford to buy a home right now. Well, as far as purchasing a home, you won't know what you don't know unless you make that first step forward. And a lot of fear can be overcome by taking that step and getting qualified to see if there is actual other, other steps that need to be taken prior. For example, credit score, possibly um, down payment. We'll go over all of these, these uh, steps to make sure that you are prepared and can move forward. Cindy, do you ever think it's... Uh ever too early to apply uh, for a home loan or to get the process started? No, no, you should always, um, once you, if you're paying rent, let me back up. If you're paying rent, then you're able to make a mortgage payment because right at that point, you're making someone else's mortgage payment. And if you are able to consistently do that and you're working, then we can get started and see how we can move you into ownership instead of being a renter. From my own experience in real estate, what I actually find is uh, to be true is the same exact thing as you said, is uh, here in California, a lot of times that if you can afford that $2,000 a month in rent, the $3,000 a month in rent, you may have an easier time being able to purchase a house because uh, you know, you don't have to go through these uh, strict landlords and it's just a much uh, simpler process because renting a house in Northern California sometimes is next to impossible. Would you agree with that statement, Cindy? 
Yes, I do. Fear number two, I should wait until the market gets better. The market is always changing. And if you sit on the sideline, on the fence, you will not move forward unless um, someone kind of helps you through that process. It's always a good time to purchase, whether it's a seller's market or a buyer's market. There are, um, home ownership is ultimate goal for every American. And the market is always good. Right now, currently our rates are so low. So right now is a great time to purchase. So, so in essence, our, our rates are the lowest they have been in, in the last 50 years. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, they are. Fear number three, I don't have the money for the down payment. Well, there are programs out there that um, offer assistance to first time home buyers and uh, it can help them with their down payment and also closing costs. And then there's another program out there. It's a grant program that can help you with your primary. It doesn't have to be a first time home buyer that can take advantage of this program as long as you are purchasing a primary residence. And there's also city assistant programs out there as well that do provide financing. Uh, they are loans um, to help buyers get in as a first time home buyer. Uh, it, some of them, they want their first responders to live in their city. So they, they give these extra little um, tokens to help move them into their city to work so that they are there if an emergency does arise in their city. Just uh, to go back a little bit here, if somebody tried to buy a house about three years ago and they weren't approved, do you think if that same buyer was able to apply now, they may have a chance? Because I know the programs are always changing. Is that true? Yes, they, they all, ch all programs do change and uh, we just have to keep up on the new guidelines. But it, a first time home buyer, if I'm understanding you, you're asking if you have not owned a home in the last three years, are you considered a first time home buyer? Yes, you are considered a first time home buyer. I can't af afford to buy my dream home. Well, what I would suggest that usually your first home is not your dream home. And if it takes a purchase to get in as, as a new family and then look at maybe two or three years down the road to sell that first property and take the equity that you would get from that purchase or the sale and use that towards another home that you want to um, possibly be your dream home. We all start somewhere and that would be my suggestion. If, if you're financially not able to buy that dream home, but you are able to buy a home that you're comfortable at that time and then look down the road, it, as your family grows, there's always events in our lives that change things and you need a bigger house because when you started, it was just the two. And then after that, the family came and you need more rooms. Well, then you can grow from there. That makes sense? It does, yeah. I guess what we're basically we're saying is you, you gotta walk before you can run. And sometimes you gotta start off with that starter home to get to mm -hmm. your home. And why buy now, right? So I'm going to cover a little bit about this. And Cindy's probably going to rein in because she has a lot more information about the interest rates than I do. Mortgage rates are historically low, around 4%. And Cindy, are they really at 4% or are they a little bit lower? No, they're lower at this point. We're depending on the term of the um, loan, whether it could, be, it could be a 15, 20, 25, 30. So you're going to have a range there, but you're looking at the low, I would say high twos to very low threes on a 15-year on a term right now. And the 
for the 30, you're looking at a, a three and a quarter right now for a third oh, wow. loan. Yes. So they're very, the rates are awesome. So just to kind of put that in perspective to, to uh, some first time home buyers, when I got my first home, uh, I had to beg and plead uh, to get 7%. And now, you know, when I got it, I was high fiving everybody. And now we're, we're talking about in the three. So that's, really a great opportunity for a first time uh, buyer to get their foot in the door and have that built in steady payment for the next 30 years. Cause are those fixed programs that you're talking about in the 3% uh, Cindy? Yes. Yes. Most, wow. most people are wanting a fixed rate. And, and if we look at our arm product, those, those are good programs and they were meant for investors going to purchase a property for short term and it could be a window from three years five years seven years or ten years and the arm product is um, is designed to lock in that rate for those terms whether it's three years five years seven years or ten years and then the investor would actually sell the property and buy maybe another property so just uh, because this is a first time home buyer workshop, so there's uh, a couple of different kinds of mortgages and Cindy's referring to an arm or an adjustable rate mortgage. And then the other kind of mortgage is a fixed rate mortgage for 30 years uh, or 15 years. And so uh, is, is that is that pretty much the gist of what you were saying, Cindy? Yes, it is, Adam. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Uh, your long-term uh, investment, right? You, uh, you uh, equity build up, uh, uh, value appreciation, and every month you're making a payment, you're actually paying down that debt. So it's a built-in savings plan. Yes, it is. Whatever you invest into your home as far as building the equity to increase it is going to benefit you if you do decide to sell the home you're building your equity. The value also is increasing um, annually so that you have that built up or, or you're gonna just pay off the home and you're happy and you wanna stay there. It, it is eliminating that mortgage payment if that's the decision that you want to make. Uh, your long-term investment, uh, stability, security, right? We got a sense of community. We always remember those uh, commercials from, I guess, about 10 years ago when, you know, a kid lives in a house that the family owns. They feel like they're more uh, part of the community. Um, I, I guess I get that a lot more now that I'm a dad. And, you know, uh, with the kids on here, if we when we purchase a house, they know they're going to be in that neighborhood and they're going to make more friends. And it's, it's something that's a little bit uh, hard to transfer into words. Do you kind of agree with that, Cindy? I do. I do. Yes. And freedom to customize. So Cindy, right now, if I came to uh, your house, you're able to paint uh, the house any color you want. You could do what you want to do. That's correct. Yes. If you want to paint a certain color in your house, the wall, you're able to do it. It's yours. Now, if you're renting, no, you have stipulations and rules and regulations that will not allow you to paint those walls because it's not your home. Once you have ownership, then you can um, do whatever you'd like with your gardening in the back to different um, things that you can do in your home as far as painting and even changing walls out and remodeling and you can't do that in a rental property. One of the things uh, too, as a home buyer, there's definitely some benefits as far as uh, taxes. Um, and you know, this is something you definitely want to run through your uh, tax professional. Me, Cindy are not tax professionals, but we just have common knowledge of what the current uh, uh, trend is right now. And the current trend is, if you're single and you sell a property, it's been your primary residence for two years and uh, you're basically tax exempt for 250,000. And if you're married, it's up to $500,000 tax exempt with, with zero taxes. That's a, like a really big tax benefit. 
in my book. And this is what uh, really got me into real estate at a young age was I, I understood that because when I did get that check for $200,000, I really did not pay any taxes on it. And it was a great feeling. Uh, have you, uh, do you experience that a lot uh, on your side too when homeowners call you the first time and you know they got a big lump sum without having to pay any taxes on it, Cindy? Well, they're excited, yes, because they're at, they want to go out there and purchase another property with the funds that they have received from the sale of their property. But I would always advise them to reach out to their tax person, CPA, whoever helps them with that to verify because uh, laws do change and you need to be updated on all of that. Got it. Um, and wealth building. So um, a little bit more about this in, in our current market in California here, when you're, when you're a homeowner, there's a lot of different things you can do besides customizing. And one of the biggest trends that we see right now is ADUs or auxiliary dwelling units. And if you want more information about this, you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, I actually have a lot of information about it. I can introduce you to some uh, contractors and uh, kind of go over the process with you. But uh, are you seeing the ADU uh, trend pick up a little bit on the lending side too, Cindy? Uh, yes, we do. We do see those um, starting to uh, pick up as well, Adam, which um, we're here to help them with, with whatever um, purchase that they're wanting to do. And uh, historically, the mortgage percentage was about 21.6. In today's market, because we have uh, much lower interest rates, uh, we're at 15.2, and especially with the rates where they're at right now, this number might even be a little bit lower uh, because our interest rates are in uh, the threes right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. That's correct. We're, we got a little scenario here. We got a, somebody that owns their home and pays $1,200, and somebody that actually rents and pays 1200 bucks. So this home was purchased for 250,000 and it appreciated to 435,000. And uh, this person paid the same exact thing in their rent. This home's value went up. So Cindy, did this renter get anything here? No, not if they're a renter, that's a loss. They, they, that's just throwing out each month for rent that there is nothing that they will gain from that. So just to be kind of clear, the, the, the home buyer um, is able to go ahead and capitalize upon the appreciation of their house between the 435000 that is currently worth and what they purchased it for, right? Um, and maybe some potential tax benefits they, they benefited for the last uh, two or three years of owning the home, as well as they may have even paid down this balance a little bit. Is, are all those statements somewhat true, Cindy? They are true, yes, definitely. As you pay your mortgage down um, each month, that is going towards your principal of the loan that you borrowed. And if you are renting, you can't account for any of that. It's just money you're throwing away. This is literally the reason why I love home ownership. And, and for me, I get a joy out of doing real estate is because when a lot of times buyers see this for the first time, they kind of understand that they're getting three benefits, right? Benefit number one is every month they're, they're paying down their, their, uh, their principal. Benefit number two is they could have some tax uh, loopholes that uh, they need to talk to their tax professionals about. And, and benefit number three is that they can capitalize on this appreciation right here, right? So maybe they can do... Uh, equity line of credit and start a business that, that they wanted to start, right? Throw their dream wedding. I mean, you've probably seen a lot of crazy things over the years, Cindy, where people have got to live their dreams through their home. Is that correct? That is correct. I mean, it, yes, it's a big asset um, that you that you own and you can take advantage like, like Adam just suggested in uh, maybe down the road, getting an equity line to maybe put in a backyard, you want a swimming pool, you've thought of, of uh, making some changes to your home, remodeling. 
That's awesome. I, I always love uh, hearing those kind of stories, Cindy. You know, when, when somebody is able to make their dreams come true uh, off of something so simple as their monthly payment that they made on their home for the last 10 and 15 years, and all of a sudden they're sitting on a big load of cash and um, they're able to go and live that dream of opening the business they wanted or going to the place that they wanted to go retire to. Those are all the reasons that I think me and Cindy really love to do our job. So why hold off on uh, buying, right? So we're going to cover a couple of reasons why you shouldn't buy a house, right? If, uh, if you're changing jobs, uh, new company, uh, your credit score is, is down. Uh, you don't have any down payment on here. Um, and it's too expensive and short-term ownership. If you're planning on living in the house for only six months, if you told either one of us, we'd probably tell you, you may be better off doing a short-term rental versus buying a house because there are some fees when you buy a house like closing costs, appraisals uh, that you do incur. Or is that pretty much what uh, you have in mind, Cindy? Yes, there are costs involved when purchasing. You have to have a down payment and um, also your closing costs, getting your impounds um, escrowed in so that you can make your taxes and, and insurance as part of your payment. And there's title fees, there's inspections, there's uh, appraisal. So there are costs that are involved in purchasing a home. and. Uh, if you're wanting to look at um, short term, we can suggest other other ways of doing things. And everybody's situation is always different because uh, that's why a lot of times when we meet with a first time buyer, Cindy and I both do a needs analysis to kind of go over their, their ultimate goal and making sure that we're pointing them in the right direction. That's correct. We'll look at your financial goals and what you're wanting to do and what you're wanting to achieve because that's part of what Adam and I do. So, and Cindy, uh, I can speak for myself on here. I don't charge anything when I'm doing a buyer consult. It's absolutely free. And in fact, there's really no obligation. If uh, somebody loves what I'm doing and feels the energy that I have for my, uh, for my career and how I'm able to help people through the process, I don't charge anything for your uh, for your side. When somebody reaches out to you and wants to get a pre-approval, you charge them any fees? No, no, absolutely not. I'm here to help and assist, and uh, I feel the same as you do, Adam. That um, if the borrower clicks and they want to work with me, then we will move forward in the process as far as getting them. Um, out in the market looking and uh, approval letters so that they can and feel comfortable putting in an offer and knowing more or less what their estimate monthly payment would be with their property taxes and insurance and possibly a HOA if, uh, if that certain property has it. I want them to be comfortable in knowing that uh, they can actually put in an offer and if it gets accepted, then they're going to be very comfortable with their monthly mortgage payment. And then, hey, Cindy, you know, I know we had a little bit of a, these are some of the reasons for holding off. All of these reasons here, uh, they are real, right? If your credit score is down, there's definitely tricks around uh, having a low score. And, and do you possess any kind of software or anything to help people improve their, their score? Well, what I will do, I will work with my borrowers. Um, I will help them and make some suggestions as far as increasing if they need to increase, possibly paying off some debt if there's collections. You know, everyone's different. So I have to look at it at their particular um, file and make suggestions from there. But I do that. And that's just part of my service. Cindy's here to help. I've given her buyers that I didn't think were financeable. And honestly, I get an email with a pre-approval letter, guys. It's it really, literally, it could be a life changer because, uh, you know, this is something that Cindy loves doing. And I think a lot of this stuff here is actually built on relationships. And it's actually our model here uh, at AHS is building relationships one home at a time. So, um, 
realities of our market. The average home price here in Concord currently uh, is about 684,000. Um, and I think, you know, right now we're, we're seeing a little bit more of a, of a mixed market. A buyer's market is when there's excess of inventory and low demand and then the buyers get to be a little bit more pickier and uh, maybe get a somewhat of a better uh, price or terms. In a seller's market is where there's really a shortage of inventory and uh, when the house comes up on the market, it sells pretty, pretty quickly uh, and sometimes it'll sell for over the list price. Interest rates we covered, the growth of our area, we're definitely seeing a big influx in the whole California state as far as our population. Um, are all those things pretty much accurate, Cindy? Yes, I, I agree with you, Adam, yes. All right, so we're gonna cover the six easy steps to home ownership. Part one is gonna be hiring your agent, securing financing, and we're gonna go into a little bit more detail about this, finding the home, um, making an offer and negotiating, home inspected and negotiate repairs, and close and be a homeowner. So as a buyer's agent, uh, literally my job is to educate you about the market, analyze uh, your wants and needs, steer you to the home that fits your criteria and coordinate the work of other professionals. So if it does have some, some minor repairs I need to get done, I'll help you find the right people to get some of those repairs done, negotiate on your behalf. And the biggest thing with uh, being a, a great agent is literally being a problem solver. Uh, so when a problem does come up, I'm going to go ahead and take care of it. So buyer's mutual agreement. So I normally work with all my buyers exclusively. So uh, the reason I do that is because I want to make sure that I'm a good fit for the buyer. There's obviously a lot of benefits to working with an exclusive uh, buyer's agent, uh, which I can definitely cover over with uh, each buyer in depth. Uh, and one of, the, one of them is that they get to show you every home instead of just what's on the market, which really makes a difference being able to find that perfect property. You can share, Adam, that there are listings in your branch that other, other realtors may have that haven't hit market and where your buyers can uh, have that opportunity before it even hits the uh, MLS as well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, one of, one of the examples Cindy's talking about is uh, something called a pocket listing. A pocket listing is when there's a property that's for sale that just hasn't hit the market or we find out about it at a broker's tour. These are uh, places that Cindy and I go meet with other uh, real estate professionals and we actually know what's coming up on the market weeks ahead of time. So uh, definitely benefits to working with an exclusive agent. So when you hire an agent, you're going to obviously cover all these things with them. All right, so uh, this is where uh, the Cindy always steps in is uh, getting the pre-approval. And so uh, one of the things that I love about working with Cindy is the fact that she actually does a pre-approval, not a, a pre-qualification. And Cindy, can you cover a little bit more in depth what's really the difference between these two? Yes, when I do an approval, I will take all of your documents. I'll, I'll send you a link to send me all of your your uh, documents to get you qualified and I will run your file through a software through Fannie Mae which will give me an approval eligible to move forward and that's huge when I take all of that information and it's put into the software it is automatically telling me that Fannie Mae will accept this loan as the information that was given into that pre-qualification is basically not as um, approvable and using estimates. It's taking absolutely no documents at all. It's just taking, okay, I have $10,000 in the bank. I can use that. Uh, my credit score is, is this. I make this amount of money. This is what I pay out in liabilities. That's what a pre-qualification is. It's not having that firm DU approval through Fannie Mae with an approved eligible to move forward. And uh, I think the pre-approval process is so important because it literally gets all the, the forks in the road out of the way by looking at it ahead of time. And 
That way you're not finding out during the escrow process uh, because it, it gives the lender you, uh, and the buyer time to go ahead and uh, dispute something if needed or pay something if something's showing up. And uh, the, the, uh, the real big difference between a pre-qualification and pre-approval in my book is on a pre-approval, we're running credit here. On this one, on a pre-qualification, there's no credit run sometimes. And that could be a tricky situation where maybe a buyer is actually selling themselves short because they think they have a 680 FICO credit score. Uh, and in normal lending, Cindy, would you agree with me that they go off the mid score? So there's a high score, mid score, and a low score. They might be telling you the low score. That That's true. In any type of of uh, online credit scoring is going to be a complete different software than what we use in the lending. We have a complete different way of um, getting our credit score. So if you do, for example, Credit Karma, it may give you something at 720. And uh, when I run it, it would be something different because our credit pool is a different software than what you're going to receive online. So it's always better that the lender gives you that actual number because that is going to be the credit score that we're going to use. You're going to have high credit score in one beer, a mid in a second beer, and then the, the um, low, and we'll use the mid out of the three. Got it. So the, uh, just to kind of clarify for everybody, the, that score that Credit Karma gives you is called a, a make you feel good score. So it just makes you feel good because a lot of times it's not, uh, it's not really an appropriate score and uh, lenders don't look at it because every, every business model that they have, whether you're applying for a, a credit card, auto loan or mortgage, they're all used different models. And uh, we could have a discussion about that for hours. Uh, but you always want to make sure you get a pre-approval uh, as it will make your transaction a lot easier and uh, a lot of times put you uh, as a stronger buyer in a multiple offer situation because when Cindy is able to produce a DU or, or that, uh, mm -hmm. that desktop yeah. underwriter approval, once she puts it through her system, I'm actually able to submit that with the offer. And when the listing agent and seller see that, they know that that buyer is, is good to go. There's not going to be as many um, surprises down the road. That's correct. Yes. Yes. When choosing a lender, you want to make sure that your lender is um, has the correct programs for your needs. There are different types of lenders that will focus on certain programs. And um, if you're a first time home buyer, then you need a lender that um, is uh, specializes in first time home buyer programs. Uh, it could be Calif HA, it could be a grant program, it could be a different city program that will benefit you to take advantage of, of uh, the different types of programs that will help you with your down payment, with your closing costs. So that's important, that's key. If you're a buyer that is specializing in um, maybe a large home that is uh, not conforming and you don't have 20% um, down, possibly 10% down, there's programs out there that can help you with additional to get into these larger homes to qualify. There's different guidelines for different types. There's different loans for different uh, types of property. Uh, if you're a veteran, there's great, there's a great pro government program. It's a VA loan. So you want to make sure that you have a lender that can specialize in the need that you are, are wanting for a program. Uh, you you want to look at those options and, of course, um, the interest rates and uh, down payment. Those, those are all important no matter what program you choose. And uh, Sydney's going to help you create a budget, right? She's going to help you identify your expenses, determine the amount 
you can comfortably spend on your new home uh, payment and uh, make simple changes if need to, uh, to get your budget uh, in line with what you want. So understanding mortgages, uh, we got three different decisions here that Cindy's gonna cover. Okay, well, as far as um, down payment um, and um, the amount, it can be from 3% down to 20% down, depending on if you're a first time home buyer, yes, you, you can actually put a 3% down on a conventional loan. If it's FHA, it's three and a half percent. A lot of people get confused on this and they think they have to have 20%. No, you do not have to have 20%. There's also different types of loans, terms that we spoke about earlier. Uh, you have a 15 year term loan, um, which it, it will, you will pay that home off in 15 years. There's also a 20, 25 and a 30. And as we talked earlier, an arm product, which is an adjustable rate mortgage, and we can do a three, a five, a seven, or a 10. There's so much information that you need to consider uh, when you're looking at a, a your, your budget and your decision to, to actually purchase a house. Um, you know, you could be uh, living in your first starter home that you purchased for uh, $300,000, right? And uh, you maybe want to purchase a newer home because you had a, another kid or lifestyle change and you want to purchase a new home for 400000 Now, Cindy, since they're making the upgrade and they want to keep that existing loan, are they able to, in some uh, circumstances, keep that existing house, rent it out, and get a, a, a nice 30-year fixed rate on that new house if it's going to be their primary residence? Absolutely, yes. If, if they want to keep their first primary and make that into a rental, that rental now becomes income. That income will be added to your income that you are making annually working to help you keep that first primary resident so that it is actually making that payment for you. It can be washed out by renting that property and then purchasing another second property. And you can do that over and over and over. And you can continually increase in your purchase power and still have the income coming in to cover the mortgages, the rental property. I would call that a life hack, Cindy. You know, when people start thinking that way, right? And they're on their second or third property and they all have 30 year fix. Mm -hmm. They work with a great lender and they understood the process and uh, you know, they kept their finances and their credit score in line with, uh, with their future. Uh, that literally is, is going to be a life changer. Yes, it is. Because when you do retire, and we all want to retire, then you have this residual income coming. Because as you pay off your properties, that residual income, that will be part of your retirement. And that's something that you can uh, plan on, and it's an investment. PITI, we hear this term a lot, Cindy. Can you cover in detail what this actually means? Yes, PITI stands for principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And that is your complete monthly mortgage payment that you would be making monthly. If you put 10% or more down on a purchase, you have an option to pay the taxes and insurance as they come due. So that is a second choice of an option for you. Yes, um, based on your, your loan options, you can choose your down payment. Uh, if you do not have the minimum 20% down, there's going to be um, private mortgage insurance. That's your PMI that you will be paying for. So that's, that's something that um, is added monthly to your payment. That's additional to what we talked about as far as the PITI. 
But it would still be one, one payment, right? Correct. It's included in your payment, yes. And so uh, some of these funds can come from side jobs that are documented, savings, um, and you can always get a gift from in-law, parent, and Cindy can help you navigate that, uh, that course if that is the right way of you getting uh, your foot in the door. So I think what we're learning uh, during this uh, home buyer workshop, Cindy, is there's a lot of information to digest and you wanna make sure you're working with a knowledgeable lender because yeah, there's a lot of different uh, scenarios and each one of them can be different. Yes, that is true. Everyone has a different scenario and different financial goals. Uh, and to maintain your pre-approval, guys, uh, this is something that, that uh, I love reiterating to my buyers when we are uh, in the home uh, searching phase because you do not want to go out there and get a new car, right? Um, you want to make sure you don't really do any kind of credit inquiries. Uh, job changes, you know, if they're in a different line of work, uh, you may want to hold that up uh, or postpone those until you get the keys and protect your down payment. So Cindy, can you uh, chime in on this a little bit more? Any additional things that you would uh, tell people to make sure uh, you wanna take these steps through maintaining their pre-approval? Yes, it's really important that once you're approved to move forward and go out and put in offers to purchase, one, that you do not have other creditors pulling your credit because that can lower your credit score. And we will pull a soft credit three to 10 days when we're ready to fund a loan. And if there's new debt on there, that could, you could be eliminated because your debt to income ratio has increased. So it's real important to not do anything as far as opening credit cards, buying furniture, buying a washer and dryer, buying an automobile furniture. Don't do anything that you would jeopardize your loan. And also as far as um, getting um, money, get moving money around, Leave your accounts alone. Don't start moving money from your savings to your checking to your from your 401k unless we talk about what changes need to be done and how they're going to be done because it can really mess up your loan approval if these steps are not uh, looked at in the right way. All right, so now it comes down to finding your home. So obviously we have a team here that's going to help you go through this process. Right, we're gonna go ahead and define what you're looking for, needs and wants, learn about the market, and we're gonna refine your search. So I use a proprietary uh, software here to help you locate the right home. Uh, and you're gonna get alerted about that home the second it hits the market. And uh, you can let me know when you wanna schedule it. And we can be out there looking at it. And uh, we wanna be out there as soon as possible because who else has been looking at the house? Everybody. And when we go look at our homes, you're gonna go ahead and look at the space, the fancy paint on it. Me as a realtor, I'm gonna look at, think might stop the transaction from going through, right? If there's a, a big leak in the uh, in the roof or a hole, uh, I'm, I'm looking at that. And I'm looking for big ticket items such as the, the roof, uh, the air conditioning system, and any kind of structural concerns. And uh, before we make an offer, and obviously, if you're a first time home buyer, always, always do a home inspection. Do not skip this. It does have an expense, but it's well worth it. And uh, I can help you find the right inspector for, uh, for your home and get it done within the time frame needed. Condo or town home. So there's obviously pros and uh, cons to each one of these. The, the pros are really, it's got uh, less cost per square foot no yard to maintain. So if you're a busy professional and you don't want to go ahead and hire a landscaper or you don't like mowing your lawn, this might be a good option for you. A lot of times there's going to be pools and nice uh, amenities for uh, kids such as playgrounds. And uh, some of the things about condos, obviously you got a shared space. There's some fees that you, you incur, but, um, and uh, there's some rules too that you got to follow. So 
Um, but we'll go over that during your needs analysis. So one of the things that uh, I love about new construction is obviously you get the warranties, but a lot of buyers don't actually know that you can have a buyer's rep represent you with a builder because the builder essentially has the agents in the office that work for them and their whole thing is to sell the, the house for as much as possible. And when you have a buyer's agent like myself, if I walk in with you, we can negotiate a better price, get you some free upgrades and making sure everything is really the way it's supposed to be. And, uh, and you know, finishing up the transaction with you from the day I walk you through the door of the builder to the day you get the keys and answering any questions that come up uh, along the, the way. Is there, Cindy, anything else you wanna say about this? No, uh, just remember that's that's very good that you you did explain that that agent that's sitting in the office in in the new construction site, uh, they work for the builder and they also have lenders that work for the builder, and their purpose there is for the builder. If you have Adam walk you in, then he is the one that will. Um, negotiate and it's not all one-sided and the same with the lender the lender works for the builder as well and you don't have to use their lender you can use another lender and they're going to try to get you in to use just their services because the builder basically has control of those two areas and Cindy, that's a great point you just mentioned about the lender because I've walked into a lot of new construction and, you know, they're offering $1,000, $2,000, sometimes $5,000 uh, in credit towards uh, the buyer's closing costs for using their lender. And the one thing I've learned is there's really no free lunch, right? So they're going to go ahead and give you that credit. But from your time working with the lender, would you agree that the, the fees and that $5,000 is, is kind of added on to either the rate or some additional points and other other miscellaneous uh, fees that that you as a buyer will actually incur. That's true, yes. Um, there is no free lunch and it will be made up somehow. And I think that uh, you need to look at not just going with their lender, look, look at uh, an outside lender that um, could possibly give you a lower rate than what that uh, particular lender is offering and um, still have a discount. Got it. And so Cindy, just, just because uh, a lot of times people don't look at things in the same way as you do as a lender. So if I'm a buyer and somebody offers me a $2,000 buyer credit, right? Or I can work with a lender such as yourself and my payment is a hundred dollars lower. Which one do you think would be a more beneficial, uh, uh, to take the $2,000 credit or take the payment that's $100 lower per month? Well, the lower monthly mortgage payment would make sense to me because uh, even though you're getting a $2,000 credit, uh -huh. it, it's, it's not uh, equal there. If, if you're getting a credit, but yet your payment is higher, that doesn't make sense to me. If you were able to get a lower monthly mortgage payment, that's the goal. That's the ultimate goal, exactly. And one of the other things that a lot of times, uh, you wanna have your own pre-approval from your lender instead of the, the builder's lender is this. You walk into their office, they run your credit. So let's just say that day, I'm gonna show you five different communities that have five different lenders there, right? You could essentially be taking five inquiries, right? And we just talked about this on the previous slide. Like you want to you want to stick with your lender and get that pre-approval and not run your credit anywhere because every single time you you do a credit pool, you're basically uh, uh, lessening your chance of having that 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 premium uh, or low rate that you wanted. Is that pretty much true? Yeah, the credit, we talked about uh, the inquiries, creditors pulling your credit. So you want to minimize that as much as possible and be in control of that because your credit, you work so hard to get it where it is and don't want different creditors pulling your credit because it will lower your credit score. 
Okay, cool. So when you when you give somebody a, a pre approval, um, so are they able to use that for uh, a new construction and resale as well? Yes, yes, it's the same. It's the same approval, no matter where you want to purchase. Got it. And do you think it's beneficial for that buyer to, to have that with them? Because when they do walk into a new builder uh, community that they're able to show that, hey, that hey, I'm qualified. And a lot of times they can actually negotiate a better price because of that. I agree. Yes, your approval letter is like gold. And once you're approved, that gives you the, the option to go out and put in an offer. Awesome. All right, so uh, now we found the perfect home, whether it's resale or it's new construction, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, make an offer and negotiate. So a um, couple of things that we wanna consider when we're doing this is they're gonna be the purchase price terms, uh, as far as timelines and anything uh, regarding financial uh, considerations, such as what kind of loan it is, how much money you're putting into escrow, and What's your total down payment? And then the third thing that we want to talk about is going to be contingencies. And so the normal contingencies on an offer are going to be your inspections. And then we got the appraisal and we got loan. So I normally help you with the, with the inspections and Cindy helps out with the appraisal and the, the loan. So you definitely want to have a lender that's able to meet those timelines because if we can't perform within that timeline, things get a little bit sideways. That's correct. It's a contract and we have to adhere to those terms. So um, now that we got your offer accepted, we're gonna go through and do inspections and uh, make any requests for repairs. Normal uh, time frames can be up to 17 days, uh, depending on the market. I've seen them go down to three days and depending on the time of the year you're writing the contract, we can normally get it done within 10 days for sure. But uh, when you're doing inspections, um, don't sweat the small stuff. So we're looking for big problems, not worrying about the little uh, stain on the, on the tile. So that's, that's my biggest uh, advice is uh, just, you know, look at the stuff that really matters and uh, close and be a homeowner, right? So you're, you're pretty much on the 99 yard line and you're gonna be getting your keys soon. So a couple of things that are gonna be happening is gonna be uh, uh, it's something called a pre-close. Um, and so keep, your, uh, keep yourself mortgage worthy. Uh, obviously don't make any major purchases. Uh, budget for additional expenses while you're uh, thinking about buying a house. So closing costs, about two to 3% of the loan amount, right? Uh, we got earnest money, which is one to 3%. And the more money you put into escrow, the stronger your offer is gonna be. So if there's a house and it's listed for 200,000, two people offer uh, 200,000, and uh, one of them is putting down 1% into uh, earnest money, the other one is putting down 3%, the 3% uh, buyer is gonna have a better chance than the 1%. So inspections, so you wanna make sure once you put an offer in, you, you wrote a legal offer on a, on a home. So you're gonna be having that home inspected. It could be from 450 bucks all the way to $1,800 plus, depending on the size. And the major inspections are gonna be your home inspection, uh, which is a general home inspection. And then we got a roof inspection and we also got something called a pest inspection. So they'll check for things such as termites and uh, dry rot. Uh, if you're buying a bigger property, obviously sometimes you may want to do a survey. Uh, sometimes there's some miscellaneous fees. If you're doing a rush for uh, appraisal um, and when Cindy gives you your PITI, that normally includes the homeowner's insurance for a year um, and reserves. Uh, you want to have some kind of reserve for improvements and repairs after the sale is done. So if you wanted to go ahead and upgrade the windows, um, this is something you probably want to account for. A few days before I hand you over your keys, we're going to do something called a final walkthrough. So we're going to go inspect the house and make sure that's in the same condition it, it was the day we wrote the offer. That normally takes only about five minutes. It's always a great idea. And 
We're going to talk about the close approval. We're going to send out, which is called a closing disclosure. It's a document that will give you all of your fees that will be needed for closing and there will be no more changes on your loan. So once you sign your closing disclosure document, this we call it CD, then three days after you can sign your loan doc. We don't count Sundays, so it's Monday through Saturday that we count and we do not count holidays. And legally that is what we have to do. Then you would sign your loan, loan docs and the following day, the loan docs will be given back to us and title and our funder will balance to make sure that the funds that we are going to wire over, they match and the funds for your clothes that you're going to wire over or bring a cashier check in that they are there prior us funding and sending our wire to escrow to the title company. Once that's done, then title will release your property to be recorded with the county that your property is in. Once the county records the property that you are the new owner of that property, then escrow title will let us know that we are on record, which means we are good to go. Adam is ready to give you your keys at that point. Got it. And so most of the times when, when that happens, the time of the day that we normally get that news back uh, is about 3.30 p.m. Um, and then uh, you're able to go and celebrate and I can hand you the keys, but um, protect your investment, right? A uh, couple of last minute notes that we want to obviously uh, leave you off with. You want to make sure that you don't, you don't uh, defer any maintenance on your house. It's so much easier to keep the house in good condition by, uh, you know, doing those pe periodic uh, routine maintenance versus waiting for everything to be done at once. Keep an eye on any kind of things that you see, such as spots on roofs, especially after the first rains and wear and tear. If you see a a screws loose, go tighten it be before it comes a bigger problem. Uh, fixing the small problems can save you big money later. Uh, absolutely agree with that. And keep a file of your receipts so um, that way you're able to go ahead and show that, uh, you know, down the line uh, with your tax professional that I spent this much on my home repairs and, um, and they can go ahead and, and uh, get everything organized for you. Getting started, you got your keys and you're celebrating. And my commitment to you guys is to educate you about the market. I'm always gonna do a free needs analysis. I'm gonna go ahead and help you uh, find the home that fits your criteria, coordinate with other professionals, such as home inspectors, to get everything done for you on a timely basis, negotiate on your behalf, and solve any problems that may arise before and during the escrow process. And even afterwards, I'm always there to be a resource for you and your family. So here's my information. If you guys have any questions about the home buying process, I would love to help you out in any way possible. You can reach me via text, email, which is Adam at AHS Realty Pros, or give me a call. I would love to chat with you about your goals and seeing what I can do to help you through the buying and selling process. Yes, I'm here to help you and get you on the track of home ownership get you qualified so you can go out there and make offers and purchase your dream home. It's always our American dream to purchase a home and I'm here to help you and assist you in any way that I can and get the right program that will fit your needs in purchasing. Thank you. Yeah, and if you guys found this to be helpful, definitely feel free to share this with any friends and family. Um, and we're only a phone call or text away from answering your questions. And, uh, you know, there's literally, uh, you know, a program, I say, for every person's unique lifestyle, uh, whether it's, you know, something loan or uh, the perfect home. And me, Cindy, are here. We're a team, and we want to help you guys out. You guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much, and we look forward to answering some of your questions.